All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. As always, I'm Andrew. And I'm a little late, but I'm here to walk you through a pop culture classic. Is that um, what we're calling it? <laughs> yeah, I'm also Jake. Sometimes I'm Jake too. But it's, it is a pop culture classic. And can I just say, so the setup to this episode was um, Andrew kind of said, oh, I think we should like watch something and review it. Yeah. And I kind of said straight away, I know what we've got to do, right? There's there's a film. I mean, the arrogance of taking my idea and forcing a film on me, quite frankly, was upsetting. But, but you know. there's a film and it is um, a, it is a pop culture classic. Is it, will anyone have heard of it, though? Because I've never God, heard of it. Yes. And so can I, shall I tell the people what I thought of straight away? <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. The film is called The Room. Not to be confused, of course, with Room. Very different film. Is that the film Brie Larson? Yes, it and is. And a child. I've never seen it. It's, she's basically... They're like it, trapped in a room, It's essentially they? like Joseph Fritzl. I mean, it is <laughs> just, you know, very different It's pretty cheery, then. Whereas The Room... The Tommy Wiseau classic has had a film, it's <laughs> had books about it, it's had a film made about it. James Franco was in it, The Disaster Artist. Oh, is that what it was about? And um, <coughs> have you seen it? No, I haven't because it looked like a lot of shit as well. <laughs> well, what a great segue because this is officially rated, un- or no, not officially, unofficially by a lot is claimed as the worst film ever. And it is, it is like 3.6 rated on IMDb, which is, I think, very generous having watched it. <laughs> It's incredibly generous. And um but I want to say this is the most fun I've ever had researching a, uh, a, 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 a podcast. I can't say I agree, but that's fair. I know because you know what we go away and sometimes we watch the uh you know, I enjoy them because I'm learning and I like learning and I like going into things. But this was just a, a just a pure joy and I think I've got some you know, I've got some notes and I'm sure you've got some notes. Yeah, I mean <laughs> so what I initial d- thoughts? Because you messaged me and said about, I imagine you were about halfway my through the film in, and said, reaction, "Why the fuck have you made me watch this?" When I started watching it, was one of genuine anger. Like genuinely, the first five minutes of the film, I genuinely went, "What the fuck am I watching?" Um, so I texted you, and then I calmed down a little bit <coughs> and continued watching it. Um, but in general, like when I sat there watching it, I couldn't figure out, and I'm still not sure whether they deliberately made a film that was that bad. Or if it was a genuine attempt at making a decent film, it's an excellent, it's an excellent philosophical pondering. Um, I think they just made a film that was that bad. <laughs> but the thing was, what worried me most was when I found out how much the film cost that someone actually stumped up yeah. the money to pay for it. Yeah, well, it was mostly self-funded. It was mostly him. But it cost six million. To yeah, make. no, he put most of that. In like I th- I'm pretty sure he was fairly well off. Is is this Tommy Wizard? The, yeah, the guy with black I mean, long hair. Yes, and to, I mean to be fair, I should have done more research into this. I could have read the book. There was a book. No, I just thought I watched the film. We'll talk about it. That's on me. That's a poorly planned podcast. I mean, what worries me is now that I found out that it was a genuine attempt at making a film. If anyone decides to watch it, and I think what I'll do oh, you is should. Yeah, we'll put I'll the link put a up. link in the description it's, of this episode. It's on YouTube. It's free. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll put the link in the description on the podcast or wherever you find it. If you go into the description, you'll find it in the link down below. Along with, just a nice little segue, our uh, link to YouTube, our website and everything else. So, uh, yeah, just thought I'd plug that in there. That yeah, will, no, I mean, that'll our, come up on the screen, by the way. Our content is, is good. It's, you know, you guys know that. I don't know if it's as good as The Room, though. <sighs> <coughs> Do you know what? If anyone said to me they preferred the room to our podcast, I think I would have an issue with it. Um, well, this is about to be a tense episode. <laughs> I just, I, don't, I, I, there was, to be honest, two moments where I genuinely laughed out loud. Two? Uh, I had so many. Um, I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Really? I loved it. And I, t- I, I, I s- so I, this is what I was going to say to you before the podcast, and I started talking about it, and I kind of went, no, 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 we'll save it, we'll save it, because otherwise we'd have got on the podcast and had like three minutes of content because we've discussed it all yeah. before. So I watched it in kind of two batches. So I watched about an hour just before I went to bed one night, or I was okay. in bed. Um, I know, picture that. I'll you know leave it there for a what minute. What are you wearing? Picture it, just underwear, what just boxes. Of, oh, what sort of sheets did you have? Nice ones. <laughs> How soft were they? Really soft against my naked body. And uh, what were you doing? Well, I was watching. I was watching the room. Oh, so, so I mean, it's got a bit. Like, I was it's got a bit awkward because I thought it was. Anyone illegal. watching on YouTube, it turned a bit pornographic <laughs> there for a second. So I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, it's going to break the community. You were in bed, naked, it. touching yourself, watching the room. I was watching the room, and I was, I was watching it in bed, and I was like really loving it, and I was getting some certain vibes from it. 
and I've sort of written them down and I'll go into them. Certain vibes. But then what happened was I watched the last 30 minutes um, yesterday, in fact, after work. And what I realised was I, s- I was suddenly able to look at it a bit more critically and analytically okay. and creatively and realise what it was that was giving me those vibes, what technical aspects okay. of it that were giving me those vibes. I mean, it had a litany of errors for me, like just b- especially now I found out that it was a genuine attempt at a movie. There was things like there were scenes where someone would walk into the house that the r- that the film was based in mostly, yep. which yep. was the living room of which I assume is uh, the room. Johnny and Lisa's house, wasn't yeah, it? The I two assume main that protagonists. I did write down that I assume that that living room is the room. I'm assuming so. Um, Very disappointed. If but one no of my issues room. was when people would walk in. On occasion, they would shoot the camera down to outside the house. And it was quite clearly just in a studio. There was just wood outside the, <laughs> outside the front door. Um, and then there was another thing that I really took issue with, which was when they were on the roof of this building, which apparently for some reason everyone decided to congregate in, um, there was a roof to it and there was a shed on the roof. Oh, the entrance. That was quite clearly just yeah, a yeah. shed. And they would just walk into this shed and close the door. No one's going down any steps. They're just standing in the shed. Oh, oh no, so right, so... Okay, so the first thing that kicked off when it, when you open up Tommy Wiseau Productions and whatever <laughs> is who the fuck did the score? Because that for me was a cross between Zelda and Neighbours. That was what I got. I got mostly like daytime soap. I know there was a lot of daytime soap through this, but I got <laughs> real daytime soap. And then there was this like do 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 thing going on. And I was like, that sounds like Zelda or some shit. Like, what the fuck? Who the I, fuck I, did I don't this know score? what was going on with it. Um, and that's throughout the film. That score is consistent throughout. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, well, yeah. Sorry. Denny Denny's entrance made me laugh. I have an issue with Denny in general. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a very troublesome character. He's so weird. Um, I mean, the film started, and I assumed he was their child. Um, I didn't know who he was. They were, yeah, exactly. There's a yeah. period of the film where you're watching and you're like, "Who the fuck is Denny?" And then suddenly they explain He's, who he I is. I see who he is. Oh, sorry. But um, yeah, so the film starts, and there's a sort of playful scene between the two main protagonists. Denny comes in, and they're like. Right, well, we're going to go upstairs now, and he's like, "Okay." I'd oh, and like, then he comes up and watches. I'd like, and then he goes up and watches them like playing around on the bed, having a pillow fight, and then he jumps in and he's just like, "I just want to watch." <laughs> so, and I tell you what, he's really guilty of doing one thing that I was like, "Jesus, this is this is part of the reason it's giving me real daytime soap vibes as well." Was people kept walking into the, the apartment and then leaving without ever actually doing anything. So yeah, a yeah. couple of times he'd walk in and go, hi, Lisa. And she'd be like, oh, hi, Denny. I'm, and he'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm just here for Mark. And she's like, oh, well, he's like literally on the driveway. Like, I'll be here in a minute. And he goes, <laughs> oh, okay, well, no worries. I'm going to go anyway. And then just sort of goes back out. And it's like, and the point of view in this scene was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, absolutely ridiculous. Um, the sound editing straight away just really, really made me laugh because it was so bad. I've also got written here, so this was one of the early thoughts. Because so these were well, all the other written. problem with the link was the lip sync wasn't lined up, and I didn't know if that was the film or just it was a bad copy. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. I'd never considered that. I just assumed it was the film because it's such a bad film. Um, no, see, I assumed it was because so it was I'm, a bad copy. I'm live writing these ideas, so some of these ideas contextually might be like well surely you know no, but i was live writing this so i've one of the things i've got in here is is denny a schoolboy who's friends with adults like what the fuck is that about like, well he wasn't a school he wasn't a school he was boy, no he though, was, was no he? he was like but he, he was, was in fo- college he was in college um which means like uni my issue with denny was that we got to a point where he was into drugs he was in for money and then just nothing happened with I'll that. It what, just never got mentioned. I know again. there was a lot of there was a lot of there's um, another one MacGuffins and it was no my and f- red herrings. There was a lot. There was one moment that just it the, it was the first moment that made me laugh out loud while I was watching it because of how absurd it was. Um, and it's the first time you meet Lisa's mum in the film. Yeah, yeah. And sh- they're just chatting, and then suddenly the mum's like, "Well, I might die soon." And she's uh, like, "What yes, are you talking yes. about?" And she's like, "Well, I've one hundred percent got breast cancer." She's like, "Yeah, I got the test and back." And then they move on. She goes, "Oh, yeah. well, everything." And be it's all right. never mentioned and again. It's like, how is that a normal conversation to have? And I'll tell you what. That is, listen, I'll come to that. So I got um, what the thing that made me think about the lines and the, the, the where they match up and that was. That most of them seem funny, it, and it looked like Tommy Wiseau's lines were all added in post production because nothing he says Matched on screen lips. comes out through the audio, whereas all of them do, except him. He, I by don't the know, way, I thought the lip sync was bad in general. I've so got I just they could all, it was 
they could all get away with a job on a soap there's opera. no way you'd spend that sort of money on a film and put something out there with that lip sync, surely. Know. Like, but I'd say they all they all, they could all get away with soap opera acting, except for Tommy Wiseau, who is without doubt the worst actor I've ever seen. It's the worst performance <coughs> I've ever seen in my life. And if you think you've seen a film or a TV show, by the way, and you think, <coughs> oh no, that was bad, honestly, go and watch this. And whatever is currently at the bottom of your list in terms of acting performances. This will get Guarantee bad. this will be 10 times worse. And that's not an exaggeration. 10 times, I promise you. I think you. what made it worse as well was the dialogue because they'd be having conversations that just went... They, they weren't connected. There was no... Like, no, well, I've got it here. And I'll get, so what I think was found, and this was one of the things that gave me a real daytime soap vibe, was that in daytime soaps, y- you know, scenes don't really get a chance to explore characters or explore the moment no. or whatever. So they're very... Plot driven, so you yeah, you yeah. do have conversations where people come and go, go. Oh, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got breast cancer, and you're like, whoa! But you need <laughs> to get to the plot quickly because that's the pace of daytime telly, and yeah. you've got to fit four or five stories I, into I, thirty minutes. I get that. On this, they could have opened up and didn't. Well, uh, they went honest, straight to the plot. I didn't quite understand what the point of some of the, the worst dialogue I've ever being seen. Mentioned no, as or well. Denny having the it, it didn't problem contribute with the anything. Things. Denny had a guy come in to beat the shit out of him because he was into him for drug money. Never find out what drugs and then, are. And then nothing happened. And he just kept saying it doesn't matter when they asked him what drugs he was on and how much money. And how he much had. money? No, no, no. And it was so. Um, oh, it was so. He so was this random kid that apparently the main protagonist, Johnny, played by the wonderful Tommy Wiseau, um, took in apparently and is putting him through university and is also paying his rent. In the, in, the same building, building in the same building that his best friend also happens to live in. Um, can we talk about. So this is really early doors. Um, where they have a sex scene, um, and it was more like a music video than a film, like but like a bad music video. And also, what preceded that and then went throughout the film is his laugh. It's like the cringiest laugh. He does this, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. and it's like throughout the film, it's just. I mean, I can't do it justice because it's so no, cringy. You can't. Intima- you can't uh, but do you know the laugh I mean, though. It. If I say the laugh, yeah, that he does throughout. Mean. And the script. Okay, so this is what I've got written about the script, and I think this is really spot on. Let me let me run this past you. Yeah, yeah go for it. It's, I still forgot, actually, my God, it is like, what it is, is it's, to me, it's like a child right into a spec. Like, no subtlety of motion or f- any extra dimensions. It's just straight to the spec and straight to the point. It reminds me very much of, do you know when you see, like, um, if you've ever watched on YouTube or anything, those game shows and um, late night shows where they where they give real actors mm. scripts written by kids. So they said, oh, we wrote, write a story about, you know, spies. Here it is. And it's just, like, just everywhere straight to the point and just really weird and it jumps around and that's what it reminded me of. it's like these are fully grown adults speaking what sound like the words of a child yeah i mean i think for me the <coughs> issue i had with the dialogue was <coughs> it was it was like they were trying to add texture to characters but giving nothing to back it up so like the mums worried about that i think what they were trying to add with the breast cancer thing was that the mum was concerned that she might not be around for long and she wants to make sure her daughter's looked after. And which that is, was the conversation they were having. Um, because Lisa in that conversation was telling her that she was no longer in love with Johnny. Who's very she rich. She wanted to leave him. Yeah, and he's very rich. And the mum's like, uh, you never get married for love. You yeah, know, you married you for money. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so my I think, motto. I think that was <laughs> why they added it, because they thought it was a very quick and easy way to add like levity to what she was trying to say. But it just... The acting, I'm assuming it must be, I mean, to be honest, I don't think any actor could have sold that line, but the acting was no. at such a level. Well, this is the thing that I've got written down as well, was it going back to the thing about um, actors reading out scripts of kids. Whenever you watch those, ch- whenever I've watched those challenges online, yeah. the actors commit, but only have a half commit because they know the lines are silly yeah, and yeah. they can never fully commit. And that's what it was like with this. The actors were only really half in it because it's like, who the fuck can sell a line where in 20 seconds I've got to tell them I've got breast cancer and then just move on as if nothing's ever fucking happened. And it happened. never gets mentioned again. <coughs> I did a f- I did like about eight minutes in, I did my first hee <laughs> hee because it was so <laughs> bad and it was making me laugh. No, to be honest with you, I don't think I enjoyed it at any point if I'm being really honest, I found it less irritating as it went on because I just took it less and less seriously. Also, it feels like none um, of the, um, none of the, there's no on-screen chemistry. It feels like none of these people have ever met each other in no, their lives. and like there's no symmetry to any of the characters. There's nothing that seems to connect them. Um, and you're just sort of thrown into this very basic run-of-the-mill scenario. But they then throw this 
weird story, like side storylines into it that, like we've mentioned, just yeah, no, another get abandoned within another, seconds another, of being mentioned. Another scene that really, really made me laugh, by the way, <coughs> was to show he's a really kind, caring guy. He goes and gets Lisa uh, a dozen roses just out of the random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes into the flower shop with his sunglasses on. And he picks them up and she goes, oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't realise it was you. And it was like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? And he's like, it's yeah, it's this, me. This really distinctive looking guy yeah. with this long black hair always wears oh, the same suit. Recognize. And she's like, oh, I didn't know it was you. It's like, mm, Also, can we mention off. his suits? Yeah, they were like cheap suits, right? Well, for this a man that's really rich. Yeah, yeah, like they were the budget for this film was of such that everyone had a suit that didn't fit. The female lead, she seemed to do all right in what yeah, she, she was did wearing. okay out of it. She had a couple of nice dresses. But all the men she were just fine. putting suits that were five sizes too big for them. Yeah, no, really made me that just I don't know why. And this is where I kept going <coughs> back to where even in my head I was like, even if they were trying to make a serious film, they can't have really with what they delivered in the performances. No, and... There's no... Com- like, as you said, there's no commitment from anyone. That's the other... The other bit that made me laugh from that scene, by the way, is at the end, when he just goes... When someone comes in with the dog, and he goes, Hi, doggy, bye, and just walks out, <laughs> and it's like, what the... F- <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> Isn't that in a cafe or something? There's that's a, in the, that is in the flower moment. shop. And I, and but you do get that in the cafe shop There's a weird moment later. in the film that confused me, and I still don't really understand it. I think I know what it was. But there was a scene where they were all wearing tuxes. Yeah, and I thought I it, was for the it was for the wedding. But then he goes one round. They f- well, first they off, they start going playing American football, which they just kept doing during this film. These yeah, random really bouts weird. of American football where they'd be as close as we are and just throwing throw the a ball football at each together. other. And and <coughs> one of the things about it, when they did that, or no, there was another moment in the film when they were playing American football. Oh, inside, and they pushed him into the. Well, no, they were outside. They were down an alleyway. Yeah, they? that's the one with the tuxes. Yeah, and just. They're all standing there, just doing nothing. And then randomly, the guy just charges into the other guy, knocks him over, and he's like, oh, oh sorry, I got carried away. And it's like, you were just stood there. Yeah, no, and also, okay, <coughs> when he gets home, so the whole, like, one of the underlying things is he's, is this is the part of the reason it, it, kind of, it kind of builds the climax of his life, just keeps going wrong and wrong and wrong. He's really, yeah, yeah. he's on a roll, his life's going well, and then suddenly everything's not going well. So one thing is, and this, again, made me laugh, it's like, bro, <coughs> who wrote the script? When you're writing this script, Look back up and see what you've actually written in the script on the page before <laughs> and have some fucking consistency. There's no continuity at all. So he comes in and he goes, she goes, um, did you get your promotion? He goes, nah, and sits down looking all frumpy. And she goes, you didn't get it, did you? And it's like, what? <laughs> like, really? He's just told you. Like, what the fuck gave you the <laughs> idea that he didn't get it? <laughs> that I properly made me love. And then, yeah, I've got mum, breast cancer, no big deal. Just absolutely thrown out there and then left. <laughs> that was the bit that first, but and it, to be honest, it wasn't a loud, la- la- loud laugh. It was just sort of a <laughs> sort of thing, yeah. just like yeah. Jesus. No, it was like a wow. Because it was <coughs> so. If you watch it, even though we've told you about it, I you won't see it. that line coming. It just comes out. And there's a few like that as well, where they're just. I like, mean, if I'm being really honest, I don't know if I would recommend anyone to watch it. Okay, well that does that does answer the question I'll ask at the end, but we'll we'll get on to that. Also, then there's um Mike and um Chris I want to say Krista or something, Christina something. Oh like then that. the two was it the, the blowjobs? The blowjobs thing. His face, he does this like, okay, you need you to go on to YouTube and see it. And he's like For anyone oh, listening to the podcast, go to we YouTube just and just watch the faces that we just made. Because the, no, or, or just go and watch the film. But like, it's <laughs> such a—he proper can talk to his face, and it's like, oh, and it's almost like a carry-on cartoon. I mean, it's so bad. As, <coughs> as I keep saying, it was so bad that you couldn't believe it could be a genuine attempt at making a movie. Also, she gets—that's just after that. They go to the rooftop and, and then he's getting beaten up and whatever. <laughs> she gets so emotional for like no also, reason. She just how did really that guy gets get like that. Roof? Surely there's keys to access that building. I imagine you just walk through their front door, which always <laughs> seems to be open and everyone seems to walk in. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then also, so there's a really famous scene in it, <coughs> a really famous line, and if is you there? say this, there's everyone will get it. And what it is, and I'll tell you, it, he comes out and he's going, it's when he comes out to the rooftop and he's throwing his bottle around and Mike's, uh, Mark's sitting just on the other end and it's quite a short, it's quite a small space, so you can. Yeah. S- and he comes out and he's throwing his wall, and he goes, "Because uh, she's just made up a lie that he's hit her, <coughs> and there's domestic." Oh, yeah, and he comes, yeah. he goes, "I did not hit her. I did not hit her. It's rubbish. She's making up lies." 
oh hi Mark and that line is like oh hi Mark is super famous and now I get it because the is switch <coughs> just comes out of nowhere and it's like first of all there's no way you didn't see him there second of all you go from being really angry just being like oh hi Mark <coughs> do you want to just play some American football and chat yeah they, there's a weird montage at one point where them two go off for a jog together yeah. and they're just throwing an American football between them as they're running along. And I've never seen <coughs> anyone ever do that with anything. No, it's, I mean, yeah, it's also on that rooftop scene <coughs> between him and Mark, there's some really bad editing. So, like, I had to genuinely, I had to scroll back. So I was like, did I just make that up or am I just seeing that? What's that? So they walk off, <coughs> they get up. Side by side. Yeah. And then it cuts to them on the front on as they're approaching the door to go downstairs. Okay. And they're on the other side of each other. Okay. And that was the most obvious one. But then as the scene went on, I was like, yeah, there's quite a lot of that where it suddenly like cuts to a side shot and they're in a different position. And yeah. it's like, you just had no continuity at all on this. No, I mean, they, they, really never, they never did across but the film. <coughs> at that point in the film, I had a really positive moment. What's that? I genuinely, I thought, Fuck me, if he can make this, I can make my films. <laughs> I n- and I'm just in all yeah, seriousness. Yeah, if he got like funding for that. If then. he can make that, and he had the, the, the bollocks to put it out there and watched the final edit and went, yeah, I'll release that. I mean, re- at that point, you're quite financially in, so I guess you probably yeah. feel you need to. <clears throat> but if you felt the need to put that out there, it's like, well, shit, I can do anything. I guess so. I mean, I don't know if personally I'd want to be remembered for making that sort of content. No, but equally, if I was really, really bad at something, I probably wouldn't do it. <coughs> yeah, no, I'd agree but, but with you. But the fact that he's done it, like he's that bad at it and but he's still done it, it's like, fuck <laughs> this. I mean, well, yeah, that's for the listeners to decide and tell us. Yeah, guys, why are we podcasting? It's for the listeners to tell us and they can do that. <coughs> yeah. Crossing Swords underscore podcast on Instagram and at Swords you know Crossing what? on Twitter. We have a loyal following, but a very quiet one. Yeah, they're quite quiet. I don't mind that. It would be nice to hear from them more. I, I don't mind. Only in terms of like things Ideas. they'd like us to do. Yeah, yeah. And improvements. Because ultimately, I feel like if we do, not to go off on a tangent too much, like if we do stuff that they enjoy, they're going to be more likely to share it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then we got to, so there were two injuries, both times they were playing f- um, football. <laughs> this The one that happened indoors, when you like pushed him into the, ca- and he did just basically like push him into the cans. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and this was, that was Mike. Um, pretty much the last we see of Mike till it comes to the party um, because (coughs) Peter then comes in out of nowhere and I did note that I was (laughs) like like, so Mike comes in (coughs) as part of this friendship group then he gets injured and we don't see him again to the party but thankfully we're all right because Peter's (laughs) coming now who's not been mentioned or seen since do you think the actor got (coughs) injured during filming or something and they were like well we just need someone to fill a few scenes or he lost faith in the project but (coughs) I would say we need a psychologist the the second moment that made me laugh and like frustrated in equal measure involved Peter, um, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too much, um, but it's a scene between him and Mark, and uh, so not to give too many spoilers away, I don't really doesn't care. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't uh, matter. Johnny, <coughs> oh, we should have started this whole episode with a spoiler warning. Yeah, it's a sp- <laughs> doesn't matter. No, we're there. well in. If you're listening um, at this point, you know we're spoiling it. Lisa is having an affair on Johnny um, with his best friend who also happens to live in the same building as them called Mark, who is this... Is oh, hi, Mark. Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Um, no, he's American. So at this he's point... He's a decent-looking like, chap. I can, I don't, she's a good-looking woman. He's a decent-looking guy. I can see I mean, them getting together. Was she that good-looking, though? <coughs> Better-looking than Johnny. Yeah. That was, a poor, that was a money match-up, for sure. Yeah, but like, if he had as much money as he said he did, surely he'd be... Tripping in better swag than her. <coughs> well, he was loyal. Oh, do you know what that made me laugh as well? When one of them goes, I think it might have been Denny. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is really dry. And he says to Denny, he's like, uh, Denny says, I'm like, oh, how did you guys meet? You never told us or whatever. Yeah. And he goes, oh, it's such a fun oh. story. <laughs> when I moved here and I did this and I did that. I didn't know many <coughs> And to be fair, they actually call him out on it. He yeah. goes to the store and they go, no, that's okay, not interesting. okay, but you haven't actually sent how you met her. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, no, well, you know, she was at a coffee shop when I went in there. It's like, yeah, that is a really shit story. Yeah. That is, and then, I mean, that's. I imagine many people listen to this podcast and have that same feeling about anecdotes <laughs> that we share. No, they don't. We start. This we go. Is, this is going to be a really interesting episode. They follow podcast, the link and they go. There's not yeah. a dead moment of air. It, it's all crisp, golden, and clean, and sexual. You're and right. I doubted myself. I tell you what. It's not. It's not. It's not the room. We're better than the room. It's. 
what what I picture when we record a podcast, it's me and you oiled up in speedos, lying on bare skin rugs in front of a fireplace with snow outside, everything <coughs> like that, and we're just sending it through their ears. That's what they're getting. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I can't control the weather, but I have speedos. I know you do. I've seen you in them. Yeah, you have. Socially, not uh, not privately. No, you didn't want to pay the subscription. No, no, no. Uh, to be I honest, say? when you've seen it all for free, you begrudge paying for it afterwards. Yeah, I made the mistake of giving it out way too much yeah, early yeah, on absolutely. and then starting to charge people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so sorry, back to the scene I was talking about before um, we got sidetracked. Mark and Peter go on the... Or Mark's on the roof smoking a split. Oh, yeah, this Feeling scene. sorry for himself uh, because he feels conflicted about the fact he's sleeping with his best friend's girl and... He's in love with her and he wants yeah. to be with her. Yeah. And he's sat on the roof. And then so Peter comes up and sort of tries talking to him. And he's like, look, I know you and Lisa are sleeping together. And I think you should tell Johnny. And so, so Mark responds <laughs> by trying to throw him over the edge of the building. Like holding him over the edge, threatening yeah. him. And then they suddenly stop. And just carry on talking as if nothing happened. No, and he does that a few times, by the way. He goes off the rails over nothing. Yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> that again, it gives me real soap opera vibes. It's like you didn't have time to explore the emotion yeah. or the man. You just had to go straight into the <laughs> plot. You just had to dive no, into it. But the it. thing is, they didn't know, really. They could have fleshed out scenes a bit better. So then there's a... Um, <clears throat> sorry, there's a um, a moment where he finds... Where Johnny finds out because Lisa's reveals to his mum to her mum yeah, i'm sleeping with mark uh, no she doesn't say mark she says i'm sleeping with i'm sleeping with someone else yeah and johnny's kind of like on the stairs listening in yeah and when they they then leave and then and it kind of cuts to him and i'll tell you what honestly I, I thought he was about to break into song it had <laughs> such a kind of musical vibe well to no it. do you know what really threw me his That's first frame. words when <laughs> they walked out the room was i'll show them and it was like show them what mate <laughs> And then he goes and gets an old tape recorder and hooks it up to the uh, phones in the house. Yeah, no, to be fair, I mean, to be fair, like, the, the film was, it, it was released in 2003, so it was it would have been shot in, like, Oh, no, no, I'm not tagging off oh, no, the tape like, recorder, yeah. by the way. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the tape recorder. Yeah, no, also, I did think this, um, so it does come back into play. It's not a red herring. It's not, you know, there is a, a sort of Chekhov's gun to this tape recorder. It does come oh, back yeah, into yeah, it. Oh, yeah, it does come back But I did think, I was like... You're trying to catch her doing what? Like, you already know she's cheating, though. So, like, what are you what? trying to find out? You're what? To I people think people do that to prove their suspicions. You've yeah, had them proved. No, but I'm <laughs> guessing he feels like I need if, to he, know who. if he approached her, she might just go, no, you must have misheard what me, what me and mum were talking about. Ah, he's obviously been on that management training course I went on. What's that? You always come with evidence. Always <laughs> come with evidence. <laughs> Never hearsay. Who, who goes after people with that evidence? Well, you know, Johnny nearly did. No, but no, he didn't. He, didn't. No, he, didn't. He, he, he knew from the beginning he was going to show them. Also, there's this bit really made me laugh and really stood out. Um, so there's a moment where, as I've already mentioned, Denny comes in quite a lot and he just was like, oh, you know, hi. You there's you know? a moment where he, no, because there's a moment he comes in <coughs> and he says hi and then he stops. And it, I swear to God, it's like he's waiting for his cue. It's like he's timed his scene <laughs> at about a second too early. And then the scene continues. And honestly, it's fucking brilliant. I watched it and I was like, that's amazing. Because it really felt like he was waiting for his cue. <coughs> you know, I don't know if you've got... Have you got questions to ask once we've got through everything? Maybe, but they're more free-form questions. Okay, have well, you? No, not really. Well, to be honest with you, one of the main So what you've done is you've just called out the lack of formatting on the pod. You've been like, have we really prepared a post-discussion thing? I'm like, no, well, have you? Do you know no. what's weird? I didn't think we'd be able to talk about it for this long. That was my biggest issue with it, was that I was like, this film is so bad, we're just going to oh, sit so there and there's so much to discuss, though. There's so but much to discuss. My main, above any other character, the person I had the biggest issue with was Denny. I didn't understand why he was <laughs> why there. there. I didn't yeah. understand his dialogue. Yeah. I didn't understand the story behind him, what he was adding to it. He was just this creepy kid that got into drugs, ended up falling <laughs> in love with Lisa, <laughs> got rejected by Lisa. For anyone who wants to know, that's um, the sound I made a lot while watching this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says to at one point he says to John, he's like, Oh, I'm in love with <clears throat> I'm in love with Lisa. And he's like <laughs> yeah, he does his weird, he's like, ha ha ha. Oh, yeah. you know, that's just a. Can we also talk about his like accent for a second, Johnny? Yeah, I don't know what, where that's what from. I don't know. Should it? I look it up where he's from? Tommy I thought out. he was German. I thought that's what he was going for. Was a German There's definitely like kind of like an Austria German. Um, but I Germanic read a review thing. for it, which someone said they thought it might have been Belgium. I'm going to look it up. Um, okay. Um, but I just felt like with Denny, 
There was not a single scene he was in. Every time he came into the room in a scene, it was like, oh, Poland. <coughs> he was born in Poland. What, Johnny or Tommy? Tommy was that. John, okay. Johnny, I fuck knows where Johnny was born. We never find anything out. We just about find out it's in San Francisco. No, we just know he came to San Francisco relevant. from somewhere else. He doesn't even say where he came from, did he? He didn't say. No, no, and you don't need from. to. You know that. Th- I'll give him that. You don't need to. If you've done the film well, <coughs> sort of. I feel like you no, if you've do done the film that, well, you don't. Because, no, no, I've, they did not do I it well. Disagree so it stood because out. there's normally in every film, if you get a random character that has a different accent to everyone else in it at some point it gets addressed where they'll be like well, oh no, well, you know when I, was a I always go Germany. back to the um, I always go back to the Danny Boyle thing um, uh, considerably a, a considerably better screenwriter and filmmaker than Tommy Wiseau by the way and he was talking about making the, the job the Steve Jobs film that he made yeah and the, I can't remember which one Is he did, whether he did the Ashton Kutcher one Fast or the Michael Bender Fassbender one. one. And I can't Bender remember one. which one he did. It was, it was but Fassbender. Whoever was playing Steve Jobs, Michael, so Michael Fassbender in this instance, came up to him and he said, I, like, I'm really worried about the accent. I don't know if I can hold it. And he kind of said to him, he said, look, don't he said, I, you know, and this was quite early on in, like, this wasn't during production. This yeah, was yeah. way before that. <clears throat> and he said, look, he said, don't forget about the accent. He said, just do your accent. He said, because if we do the film well enough, in the first five minutes, people they won't care about the accent. They'll they'll buy you as the character, and they'll be watching you as the character. They won't care about I, it. I think I would. And I th- I th- I go with really that school. That's my it's school. It's a really thought. arrogant thing to say. I think I disagree with Danny Boyle. And there's a soundbite. Um, just because I do think there are certain roles that you can't like. It, if you try. I know, I, I can't really Like, see, for this, I it's think... It's been done repeatedly. It's like for this, if he's, just, if he's just a, an immigrant um, who's come no, to no, America... No, that's fine. Like in that's, terms of this story, where. it doesn't really <coughs> matter. But normally, in a film or in a TV show, it gets addressed somewhere. Even if it's just for a split second, it will be like a... Oh, well, when I was a little boy in Germany, my father used to get me hot chocolate. It'd be something that addresses... Yeah, that's I, personally, I don't, I don't think it needs... And to be honest, it's far from the... the, the but it just in terms of that line, it could have just been done. When I came from Poland to San Francisco, back in... It's all, it could have also, been. there's a scene... So just after that, there's a scene where... Um, <coughs> Johnny and Lisa make love again, which she freaking <laughs> does. She's like, I don't love him, but she's, and then she's like, oh, fuck him, though. And she yeah, likes, they go to make love, and it just uh, really quickly cuts f- to a shot of, like, the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever, and I was like, that's <laughs> very, that's, like, grand designs, that quick cut to an ex- exterior shot. How and then the music. I, I like, like grand designs. Yeah, so do I, but uh, so you don't expect to see it after a sex scene. <laughs> <coughs> well. And then, oh, yeah, and then um, when they were having their little uh, pillow fight, um, and they're laughing together. I almost believed them for those like four seconds of screen. Oh, what I they genuinely seem like they were enjoying bought them themselves. as a couple. I almost bought whatever they were, you know, whatever emotion they were portraying. I nearly bought it. Um, yeah, but uh, um, yeah, because I got it as well. The thing that gave me real like midday soap opera vibes as well was just the fact that everyone comes in and out of that fucking house. Like honestly. Like, Denny's just in and out, for, and for nothing, by the way. Like I said, there's one scene where he comes in, and he's like, oh, you know, I'm here to speak to so-and-so. And she's like, oh, well, you know, I'll get him kind of thing. He's like, nah, don't worry about it. I'm back out again. Well, You're as like, I what said, the fuck? while I was padding while you were... Um, I, can't remember what you were I was looking, looking up where he's from. Yeah. Um, there again, wasn't a better podcast that would have been prepared. There wasn't a that. scene he didn't ruin. Do you know what I mean? Like, every Denny. time he came onto screen, other than the I want to watch moment, which was genuinely funny, but was unintentionally so... <laughs> um, there was every time he shows up, even in like the climactic scene of the film, when he turns up, you just oh. Fuck also, the one thing I got that again you almost forget about him when he's not <laughs> there, and then he <laughs> comes back, and you're just like, oh, not this. Guy. Uh, one of the things that I got from it that was very um, uh, again sort of led to the whole and uh, like the biggest thing I got from this was midday soap opera, and the, one of the things that one of the things that led to that was this, you know, unlike most feature length pictures you'll watch. The scenes were very short and very quick. Now most yeah, that's most true. things they have fewer scenes, but they really flesh out the characters. They flesh out the scene. They set everything up, and just not just the scene. They set up things for further down the film. Well, look, even Whereas films with lots of people in, there's a very basic <coughs> premise: is a start, middle, end, and in the middle, the something happens, it gets everyone going, and then it gets resolved. The all is lost yeah. moment. But like in this film, it was just that it felt like they were trying to ram stuff in, as I said, to sort of 
give the characters more no, said, depth it, it, and background. And, and also, it feels like it's written by a child because they're like, okay, they're in love, but they're not in love. And then <laughs> the kid, he, he's into drugs and guns. And, and watching yeah, people and the mum, the mum is dying, and then they're not in love. And then they go to a party, and then the psychologist has a talk with them and says they should all be friends. <laughs> and you're like, who and then the, the psychologist and honestly, disappears again. And honestly, who the? F- and it's like genuinely, it's such a bad film. And I, I, I yeah. Um, um, <coughs> also, does someone walk in on them at one point? Does someone walk in on them? I've just got a note that just says, "Who's this guy who walks in on them?" Does someone, <laughs> someone walk in. I don't remember that part of the film. That's a really. I should have made more note of that. Um, yeah, that I've also got. Yeah, that we've already discussed the fact that Mike kind of like fucks off for a bit so Patrick can come in, and that's a weird switch. Also, I feel like we should talk about the character of Lisa. Because the film starts, and for all intents and purposes, like as we said, they have a sex scene, they have a pillow fight. They're they to show they're a happy couple. Yeah, they seem quite happy, and then just for no reason whatsoever, she decides to become the sociopath. That and that's proper sociopath. So she's like, and I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. She turns from, you. I love him, to he drinks and beats me, and I'm sleeping. Yeah, she makes him friend. drink for the first time. Yeah, she's, she's never drunk. Also, there was a bit that made me laugh. His mate comes over to see him. It might have been Pete, the psychologist. No, it was someone else that he... W- oh, I might might have been whoever this was who walked but in on some them. bloke comes in and uh, Johnny's drinking on his own. But did you notice what he was dr- like what he was pouring the drinks out of? He served him and this guy a drink of what you can only assume is vodka because it was clear liquid. But it was in a plastic bottle. Yeah. A large two litre plastic yeah. bottle. Yeah, and like also, I said this. So this, I did notice this. So she, he, he, she's like, he's like, I never drink, and then she gives him a, some booze and gets him drunk and whatever, and then, uh, yeah, <laughs> then there's that scene, and then at the party, he just has champagne. It's like you fucking transform quickly. <laughs> no one says a word. Well, the thing and is, I was like, oh, I don't think she you gives him Johnny. whiskey, doesn't she? The <clears throat> first yeah. time, and it, his first reaction is, ooh, tastes nice. Yeah, which is horseshit. No, no one, no has one ever says had that when they first taste whiskey. The first time um, you ever have whiskey, the reaction is. <coughs> <coughs> I remember me, you, and Ash in Brighton. We'd been out for a Chinese before a night out, and we just couldn't get drunk. You know that memory came to mind one day, and we switched uh, to whiskey Ash shots. Ash made us do shots of whiskey because he was like, "They're practically pure vodka. We'll just get hammered." And they I've never they wanted work. to vomit so much. They were horrible. Life. They didn't work either. They didn't get us any more drunk. No shots of Jack are not the one. I can remember the first time I had whiskey. Um, I was about a good Scotch is decent. I better not tell you, anyone because it is a bit illegal. In, to be honest. Like that sort of whiskey shit, but if you get a higher quality one, they're not bad to sip. They're not something you should be chugging back. Yeah, well, this, I, I remember the first time I had whiskey, and this is going to sound so fucking dodgy. So, um, we were at a scouting competition <laughs> abroad. So I was like fourteen, and one of the one Your of this scout group <coughs> went went abroad. Yeah, we did like an international God, thing. Like we went class. to we went to it wasn't middle class. It was just like there were loads scouts of scouts going abroad okay. as a child. So they were like, That's not working were, class. There were troops from Scotland, bro. You know, it is, we're not talking that middle Mate, class. there's middle really. class in Scotland. It's not all... Not in Glasgow, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's been a while since you've mugged off. It, has, of it has been a few episodes. And if there was any group of people, I would not want to piss off. It's Glaswegians. <laughs> That's proving my point that they're not very middle class. <laughs> no, but there must be some money in Glasgow. Yeah, in the pubs. No, they <coughs> must have a middle class society because footballers earn a lot of money living in Glasgow. So, no, I would oh, so they they bring the average up. Yeah, but what? Yeah, there'll be nicer areas in Glasgow that they oh, can that live they live in. in. Yeah. No, but what I was what I was saying <laughs> is, and this 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 Scottish, um, their troop leader or whatever, he just oh, it sounds so dodgy when I say it out loud. He was just, just giving you whiskey. No, yeah, he he got a, a few of us. Um, a few of the guys and Mate, like, this is screaming <laughs> pedo <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, it really Grooming. does it really does he got guys he's like yeah, just guys. Whiskey. he's like guys come in I'll give you a drink he's like don't tell anyone but oh, like, and it was so like when I tell mate, it out loud it sounds like I've, I was I've groomed. been afraid to touch you to say this but um, it sounds like I was is, is there anything you want to talk about while we're here no, it's quite good to be. He bought me dinner before he fucked me. It was like, <laughs> he was quite good about it. Yeah, he know. bought me dinner before he touched I was my un- balls. I was underage, so he bought the cigarettes afterwards. Yeah. Like, he was quite. He was cool about it. If I wanted to be so touched you're by anyone, fine with it, yeah. you know, it was a gentle introduction. No, but it sounds really rapey when I really say it like rapey. that. No, I've There's never, no I've never thought about it. As I, as I was sitting here to you here, in the moment, it felt completely as no, fine as I was, innocent. yeah, as I was sitting here and I was like, oh, I'll tell that. You know, it's a natural segue to tell Just the story of the first time I had whiskey. And as I'm sort of planning it in my it's head, first I'm time like, you got sexually assaulted. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you start sobbing into the I'm microphone. sitting there thinking, oh, I'll tell it soon. I was like, fuck, that sounds really pedo I just pictured Jake tonight in bed laying there going, did anything happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was too drunk to remember. I uh, yeah, it doesn't sound <coughs> it doesn't sound like a good story. <laughs> Sorry, was there any more to that story? He just fed you guys whiskey. Uh, no, nothing, nothing that isn't already on my OnlyFans. <laughs> Fair enough. And then on a, also, so just getting back to the film, right? So at the party, he's he sort of randomly comes. He goes, "Everyone, you know, I've got something to tell you." He says, "We're pregnant," and like I'm, I'm like, "Was she actually pregnant?" No, and she says that. Okay, but I was like, "Why didn't we see a scene of her telling him?" Like, n- if if I was making that yeah, film, I'm like, "There's there no way I'd be it. making that film for the record." There's too many tangents me that don't get explored. Have made a I'd have fucking punched that script up. No, no business. Mate, I'd have done a, such a, a job dying on that. Mum cancer scene. Yeah, been we'd have explored the things that they did. Yeah. No, and there was then like he would have had his hands chopped <laughs> off. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was I mean, strung up I mean, there's some real Denny hate on this. Mate, ours would have been dark and grey. But honestly, I was like. If I was watching any other film, and I can't help but watch it thinking if this, comparing it to like the formula of a normal film, like we'd have seen that scene. Mm. We'd have seen her telling him, and then he tells everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're like, oh, but we know, we know it's, it's like, we tell him, it's like, it's the first we're hearing it as an audience, and it's like, that's a bit Unless odd. he just made it up in the moment. Well, no, because then her friend confronts him, and she's like, yeah, I told him I was pregnant, you know. Oh, and it's okay, like, I don't remember that bit. Um, There's bits I just... Her friend, I sort of believe, like the one whose name I can't remember. To be honest, her mate's a bit of a bell end because at first her mate's like, oh, you should tell Johnny, it's really bad. You know, you're going to hurt him. And then she walks in on uh, her Lisa and Mark. and Mark and she goes, oh, you're just so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's just like, yes, yes. Oh, and also, so there's a bit in the birthday parties, which is where it kind of like, it sort of reaches the crescendo of the yeah. movie is Johnny's birthday party. And, you know, like <laughs> at the start of the movie, we're heading towards his birthday party. He's going to yeah. get married next month to Lisa. They're in yeah. love. He's going to get this promotion, which is still one of my favourite scenes, by the way. When he, I, I know I've said it. It's just, you know, did you get that also, promotion? No. Oh, you didn't no get it, did you? It's like, during I fucking the movie, loved it. Do you loved have it. any concept of how much time has passed at any point? No, a couple of times I was like, has this been a month? Yeah, that's Since? the thing. Because like, yeah, no, when, when you got that. to the tuxedo scene, as I mentioned earlier. You thought it was the wedding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it, then it when you then weren't at the wedding, it was like, right, so like how far into the future have we gone? Like, where are we? Um, also, like, so there's this, so um, it kind of starts Johnny and Mark start having a bit of a thing at the party. Completely out of the blue as well. And, and she she steps in, Lisa steps in and goes, don't spoil it, you know, like his birthday. And it's like, bro, you no, fucked I'm his best friend. Him, like, you, know I mean? you, you unequivocally spoiled And she's she already come out. She Because at that point, she said, like, I'm seeing someone else and I don't love you yeah, anymore. Yeah. And then she has the audacity to turn around and go, well, don't spoil his birthday party. And you're like, <laughs> bro, really? You're going to be yeah. standing there talking that shit. And to be honest, shit. his mate Mark, his best friend, who apparently felt really bad, had like it was so easy to like convince to have sex with her. Like she didn't have to try very hard. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like, think I'd be convinced very hard. Like just like, at one point she's like, Do you want to? And he's like, No, and then she drops to her knees oh yeah, and he's and like, he oh, says, oh, Yeah, well. okay, well we'll do it anyway. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> and she just takes her top off, which she seemed to like doing in the film a fair bit, didn't she? Yeah, she did like that. And, and also then they had like a uh, uh, and I'm gonna use air quotes here, a fight. <laughs> where they basically like grabbed each other and then ran around the room. That was pathetic. That's what we did. That was absolutely pathetic. Other. Yeah, but ours is more of a sexually charged thing. Uh, I know. There's fewer clothes t- traditionally. We've tried doing wrestling before, but we just get like it's difficult to wrestle when there's boners involved, I find. Yeah, because you sort of you want them involved, but you don't want them involved. You want them out of the exactly. way, but you want them in yeah, play. Yeah, you can't focus on what you're Oh, that's my do. new motto out of the way, but still in play. <laughs> I saw. I like, I like my penises like I like my women. <laughs> Out of the way, but still in play. <laughs> yes, there you go. I've done class regions, you've done women. We're on a roll. Um, <clears throat> oh, mine's going to get me in more trouble. Then he goes <laughs> Then he goes off on a mental one. So we're kind of rich. And he's like, you know, she's, you know, they reveal that it's yeah, us yeah, all yeah. along. And he's like, and he, he, he goes upstairs. And I think this is after she might, it might be after she leaves. Because she sort of calls up Johnny and she's like, oh, I'm going to... And he confronts her. That's when the tape comes back into it. He's yeah. like, she rings Johnny and says, oh, I, I love no, no, you no, and no, I'm going to come and see you. They have the party. He runs off upstairs and goes Locks right himself in the, the bathroom. bathroom. Her mum then comes upstairs, the one with, who's dying of cancer, comes up, <laughs> yeah. climbs the stairs to tell her, I tidied up the house so you don't need to worry. And then she just fucks off. 
And then Lisa decides in that moment, because Johnny won't come out of the bathroom, right, well, I'm going to leave him now officially. And then phones Mark to be like, I love you. I'm, I'm going to come and you. see you. And he's like, yeah, I'll, uh, I love your body <laughs> or whatever just it is. He's like, yeah, I want your body or something like and that. And then, so she goes, and or she's threatening to go, and he gets out the tape, and she, he's like, let's listen and who you've just been speaking to. Her. He's like, yeah. oh, and whatever. And then... Um, yeah, and then she leaves, and he does this absolute breakdown, and he does this weird hip thrust thing, and does this like ah ah ah. He's grabbing his crotch. He's grabbing his crotch. So he like grabs her dress. He grabs her dress. Puts her dress yeah, on his crotch. He starts convulsing lays on the, on the floor. floor. Oh, he uh, starts sniffing uh, her dress that, and then that, rubs it on her crotch. It's that ah uh, thing he did, yeah. like that noise. I'm so glad you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. I'm so glad it's stuck in your mind enough that as soon as I, I mentioned it, you it. remembered yeah. it. See, what I did with my notes, I didn't write a lot. I literally just wrote a few words to jolt my memory. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. To talk about. And yeah, so then he starts writhing around on the floor, rubbing his crotch with the dress, moaning. Then he does something that really bothers me. <laughs> What's that? He gets out a gun. And it's like, well, you could have check off gun that gun. You could have shown it earlier so we know there's a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're waiting for it to Instead come into play. Just, no, he's just, no, oh, he got start, a gun. Isn't it because he starts destroying the room and then he finds the box. He comes across the box, obviously knowing he's already, it's already been, he knows it's always been there. We don't. Yeah, but so he knows it's there. But like, and he was like, destroying the room and then he spots the box I feel and like then it he opens have been it up. Really beneficial. I, I mean, I know this is really odd at this point, 18 years honest, on, to be I, giving studio notes I to was, the worst film ever. I was expecting in that moment for him to either go and do something to them or to himself. To himself. And he did a lot to himself. Quite frankly, if it's me in that situation and I'm Tommy Wiseau or Johnny, I know I would get that gun, go and shoot them and then myself. Probably Denny as well. I'd go find Denny. Uh, <laughs> where's that little prick? <laughs> So what did I do? Mm, yeah, you just you. Yeah, I just also I don't like the way that you when you 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 sort of did a hand gesture for those that are listening. You sort of like I'd shoot them, pointed towards them, and then me, and you pointed <laughs> at your crotch, and it makes me worry that are you going to shoot yourself in the dick in that situation? No, but basically my dick is so huge when it's I in gesture the way. It's to just myself, in the way. I automatically point to the best part. Yeah, of no, me, I get that. My huge slot. I can't argue with that. Also, it's a perfect. The listeners need to know whether. Business is, do you know what I mean? Like, business. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's a fair. That's. I think that's it's a fair called answer. Called business because that's what it takes care of. I asked a question. I got a fair answer. <laughs> I can't be upset with that. I bet you weren't expecting that. Answer. But yeah, no. The th- I really feel like he could have set up the, the gun. And I also, really we, like both we could have. Know, we could have, as an audience, known if it was I was going to go out on a murder suicide, we know he'd be one of the people on my list. Yeah, but I'm like, because the, I'm you like your what? Denny. I thought about it the other day. This is so random, and I'm sorry to do it in the middle of this podcast. But I actually thought to myself, if I was dying of a disease, like, would I want Jake to use my death to springboard a career with the podcast with, like, either on his own or with someone else? (laughs) And part of me was like, no. So I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, so I thought, like, all right, fine, if I was going to kill myself, I'm going to take Jake with with you. That's your countermeasure. Not to, like, write some legal contract that says I can't use any promotional stuff from you. No, just kill me. Just kill me. So even if I'm dying of cancer, you better watch out because I might come along. I've just taken a huge vested interest in your medical future. <laughs> nah, I'm only joking. I will be, honestly, every time you but say I've been to I the doctors, <laughs> I will be asking with keen interest as to I what the prognosis I genuinely had the thought of, like, if I was going to have a tragic death, if I could take Jake with me to avoid him getting to live <laughs> off of my death, wow. would I do it? Wow. And I think it was, it was close. I don't want it to sound like it was a resounding Jake's got to die, but... It, it tended to lean towards... You did it, but you did it with tears. You yeah. know, it, it was I'm going to be sad when I do it, like, you, however I do you it. You thanos it, you know. It was, a, it was a hard resolution that you needed to get the job done. <laughs> well, it's completely unnecessary. You don't have to die. <laughs> no, I don't think I do. No. I don't think I do. But also, what that means is, Jake, if you decide in reverse that you want to do the same, I can understand. Um, I can, uh, well, <laughs> I will now. I was going to let you have your career, but no, fuck <laughs> that. I'm no. taking you with me. But anyway, um, you carry on. Yeah, so the, uh, like I said, the, the other thing that really set it up for um, daytime soap opera was the lighting. I suddenly realised that during his death, uh, he he kills himself, by the way, shoots himself. Yeah, he um, pulls the gun out and puts it in his mouth. And then and then Lisa and Johnny come back in for no reason. It's like, well, didn't they leave? And oh, well, Anyway, no, 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 but yeah. the lighting, 
is the same all throughout. It's like it's quite well lit because that's what you want the camera to pick up. It's like and it, it makes yeah, you really no appreciate that in any good film they use lighting. Lighting yeah, is a yeah. tool that they use. This wasn't that at all, and that's what you get in daytime soaps. It's like there's no yeah, you're absolutely right. Creativity He's laying there it. on the floor, bloody, and the whole room's just very nicely. Did I did have this as well, by the way, because they're upset. They're like, oh my god, and Mark's like, oh fuck you, bitch. You know, I want to disown you. You killed him. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And then Denny comes in, and I'm like, no wonder he's upset. His tuition's just gone out the window, <laughs> and his rent. <laughs> he's more upset what? than anyone, and I can understand why. <laughs> to be honest. One of my la- my actual last note on it is, and then Denny fucking walks <laughs> in. <laughs> I can because imagine that was the, the point the where the just... I wasn't happy with the ending, because in my opinion, I'd rather Johnny went on a rampage and killed the two of them than just kill himself. And then it made it worse that Denny showed and up. And then Denny walks in, and I'm just like, oh, fuck's sake, man. People are now going to... The thing is about our listeners now, they're not just going to have to to watch the film to kind of see what we're they're talking gonna about. They're going to remember gonna have to. They're going to have to watch it to see how much they hate Denny. Because yeah. you've set him up, they're going to be like, Denny can't be that bad. And they're going to have to go and watch it to find he out. He is, though. Like, do you not agree with me, though, that he's like, arguably yeah, the I worst character in the whole thing? His, his character doesn't make sense. Like, I wouldn't he necessarily like, have that hate. Anything, though. Like, there's nothing he adds to the story other than you going, fucking Denny. And like so, like they find out he's into drugs and like in debt, and Johnny's just like, "Oh, Denny." Sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then why you didn't know, you come to me? Like I said, and he gets, she gets really emotional in that scene for no reason at all. She's like, "Why, why?" <laughs> and then you know, and they're like, yeah. "How much? What so, drugs?" And it's nothing. So Johnny dies, and everyone comes in. <laughs> yeah, and there's a weird like. Um, kind of audio over the top at the end of like the ambulance turning up and some neighbours being like oh, oh, I heard yeah, shots and yeah, you're like yeah. what the fuck is that about it's way too late for that and also it's poorly done there's no like layered like, of the sound they all start like Layering. crying over his body the bit that got me though was Mark the guy who's been banging his missus kisses him on the head yeah and I'm that's like, really what are weird you doing? really weird like completely disowned <coughs> the only thing Excuse is that me. I watched through the credits and this this really stood out to me um did you know Tommy was out and you know, credited on the movie as you know with in the credits, obviously where creditation would be, had five assistants, including the guy who played Mark. I did hear that. <laughs> so poor Greg Sestero, his name is, had to not only play Mark in this but dreadful wait script, on him hand and but foot. wait on him hand and foot as a part of a team of five. Yeah, and on that note, to be honest, you can't really blame him banging his missus. <laughs> <laughs> but no. So let me ask you the question. Would you recommend it to other people? As similar to the question I've got, I'll ask you this question and then we'll answer them both. Would you watch it again? Um, okay, so let me... So would I recommend it to other people? Um, yeah, I would. I really would. I probably wouldn't watch it again, if I'm being honest. I tend to find with those films, as funny as you can find them in the moment, the overarching feeling I have afterwards is one of, that was an hour and a half, I'm not going to get back. So, like, where other people can find enjoyment watching stuff like Sharknado and Twenty Headed you know, Fish. And it's led to this beautiful episode of the podcast. It has. And, like, for that, I don't mind the fact I've watched it and we get to have a chat and have a laugh about it. And that's Would great. you recommend it? No. I mean, it depends. If you're someone who can watch that sort of thing, so, like, for shout out to Lindsay and Kevin who listen. They love all those sort of films, and that's not a bad thing. There's nothing yeah, lot wrong love, with lot love, lot of love for They love Kevin. stuff like Sharknado. That's that's one of the films they introduced me to. Have you ever but seen they love um, stuff like that? Zombiever. They can has its own like swing thing. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. But I'm they're into that sort of thing. Like so for them, I'd probably say, yeah, do sit and watch it because they'll get something out of it and they'll find it hilarious and they'll enjoy it. But if you're more someone like me that sort of just feels like that was time wasted after watching a really shit film, I wouldn't. But at the same time, it gives you something to talk. Like, if you get another mate to watch it like we have, you can have a laugh chatting about it. So, yes and no is probably the fairest answer. You, it, case by case situation. Yeah. So absolutely. I would say, I would say to answer those questions, um, one, yes, I would watch it again. I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, in no way was it intentional, but it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I've not laughed that much watching a film in a long time, and I genuinely think it'll be one of those things I could watch it again and again. And there's certain bits the sex scene will always get me. <laughs> Denny missing his cue. I mean, him walking. Oh, hi, doggy. Bye. All that shit will always just make me laugh. It just will. And for that reason, I think I would like not regularly, but I'd happily dig well, it out. I'll tell you what, probably swung it. For if it me, came on TV, I'd sit and watch it. If I, I found never on TV, out that it was Tommy was out genuinely trying to make the shittest film he could make. 
I would have less of an issue with the film than finding out because he succeeded. Was a genuine attempt, because then yeah, that's exactly what he went for. It's a good. But effort. when a film is something that bad and it was a genuine attempt at making a decent movie, it loses the credibility of comedy for me. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I always comedy is kind of. I was someone. Someone once described comedy as subverting expectation, and it's hard to subvert expectations well, comedy, when your expectations are that low. I don't think you can really define comedy it. in any way because there's so many different forms of it. There are many different forms. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of subjectively, my it's not I my cup of tea. So it's not something I would watch over and over again. You can get enjoyment. But from I it, can I think, appreciate I think most jokes. I think they're not that. No, no, yeah, no. no, no. Anyway, yeah. To answer your question, um, because it's weird because there's things like I like Ricky Gervais, but I don't like people like Frankie Boyle. So, and they are similar in their approach to comedy, or they were at one stage. Um, but yeah, so like I would say subjectively, there was funny bits. I can see why other people would find it really funny. It's just not loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's just not for me. And I'll tell you this. So to answer your question, yeah, to answer your question, would I recommend it? Yes, absolutely, for a number of reasons. One, because like I said, it's fucking funny. Two, it's pop culture classic. Like at least you can but say look, you've seen it. What I would, yeah, what well, there's that. And three, it's a great demonstration of what not to do in a movie, and it will genuinely. And I'm not, I'm like, we talked a lot of shit and joked around and stuff. In, in I'd all seriousness, work on a movie with you. <coughs> in all seriousness. I'd work on a movie with you. Mm. But no, in all seriousness. See, I would, uh, and this is in all honesty, it was like somebody commented on uh, on the last episode, the movie episode, mm. and they mentioned um, that they overall agreed with you more on the films but was just delighted that I'd included Jurassic Park. And I honestly said... Shout out, Danny. ...that, in my opinion, you have a better not knowledge at the base but in a general better taste in movies than i do so like if i mean i agree to ever but i'm biased on that, no no but I'm just, it's just honestly um i've i've not got the breadth of knowledge you. uh, you, like you've watched a lot more of the classic movies that yeah I, study have. And I have i just haven't done that um so like if we ever did that sort of project i would probably be deferring to me yeah definitely times. i think i'd more want to be involved in story rather than the actual on-day production. I think I'd like to be there, but not as hands-on. A secondary role yeah, or a tertiary yeah. role. No, but I will say, like, in all seriousness, I think it will make it will make you appreciate other films a lot more. So it'll make... It, you'll be able to watch mediocre films or good films and yeah. really appreciate what they've done. Like I said, you'll watch it. And even though you might not consciously know it, subconsciously you'll know, okay, they've done the music really well, the sound editing's really good, yeah, the yeah. lighting is... is you know, uh, good. Well, like, quite frankly, even our editing on our videos is better than better than that film. So that I said says it felt a lot. like every Tommy Whistle line was added post production. And don't yeah. get me started. Well, like when you said when they're running through the park <laughs> and they're having this conversation, the, it's like that no was so bad. They've just the sat in is, front of a mic and talked shit for. Well, yeah, and you're so seconds. far away from them. And you're no, just you hearing these tiny little glimpses. The volume should match. So yeah. when they get closer to the camera, the volume picks up a little bit. And yeah. when they get further away, it, it just doesn't do that. It just doesn't do that. It, it ruins yeah. the illusion. But look, I mean, would I not recommend... I would probably say in general, there's no harm in watching it. But yeah. Get, uh, like, uh, yeah it's, it's if you're in a mood to just watch something that's shit. crap that might make you laugh a little bit, then yeah, by all means. It's so bad it. as well. Like, I um, I genuinely, I was trying to... Because I sort of went into it thinking, oh, it's like officially the worst film. And I thought, oh, I don't know... How much can they get wrong, really? Uh, everything. Well, that was the same everything. thing. When you told me it and you were like, it's rated the worst film on the internet, I was like, yeah, but how bad is it really? And no, literally, it is. within seconds of it starting, you will be like, oh, It genuinely it blew my expectations out of the water. I genuinely, after the first five minutes, I paused it and then I looked at the time on the rest of the film <laughs> and I was like, it's a fucking hour and a half of this shit. <laughs> and like the whole film, you sort of sit there going, oh, give me something. <laughs> like even if they'd have gone on with the mum having cancer thing, if they'd have done it as dead pan, they'd love, done for the rest I of the film. I love that reveal. And the thing is, we've we've told you what the reveal is. We've told you how they did it, and you will still. We can't do it justice. No. You will still appreciate if you watch it. You'll appreciate how she just how she she's talking to her mum, and um, you know, she goes, "Oh, you know, everything will be all right, mum." And she goes, "No, it won't. You know, I'm dying." She's like, "Oh, you're not dying." She's like, "No, I got the test results. I got breast cancer." And then she yeah, goes, I think and there's a little pause, and she goes. Oh, well, everything will be all right anyway. Yeah. You're like, wow. I think she, if she, I'd she, ever told you that I had cancer of some form 
And you, like, in the middle of a conversation, you were going, oh, you'll be all right. And I went, no, I got the test result back. I got cancer. And your reaction was, oh, you'll be all right. And then went, yeah, I don't love my partner. I would genuinely, that would be the end of us. Might have to do it for a joke now. Well, I like, hope I never get no, the opportunity. No, I hope like, I never give you the opportunity. <laughs> like me and my sister. Fucking like, hell, first you want to kill me, I now you want me to get cancer just so you can make I a joke. I have this thing at the moment, and it's sort of an inside joke between me and my sister, and if she listens to this, she'll appreciate it, but she doesn't, so... Yeah, um, I'll go then. But when she tells me about, like, a celebrity's died, or someone's died, or someone's dying, I just go, rippers. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, so like she, she said something about our dad the other day, and I just went rippers. <laughs> <laughs> did and you <laughs> did you give a rippers to John uh, to Johnny? To Johnny? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Um, Johnny's. Would de- you like to take this moment now to give a rippers to Johnny? Johnny, rippers. And there's the thing I was saying to my sister. I would actually use it at a funeral. I said it would depend. <laughs> like she said, so what if I died? Would you do it to my children? I was like, what? Their current age or? Well, yeah. Like, no, come on now. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, I said, you can do it in a solemn tone. You could be like, rippers. No, but even then, that? do you know what? In a beautifully poetic way, that brings us back to to um, the room. Because in a way, it's like you're standing there going, rippers. But even in that moment yourself, even you don't believe it, that you can carry that off. Even you're not convinced that this is going to this is gonna work in this room of people. I think it's worth trying it. Do you know what I mean? I think it's worth there being a few mavericks out there. That and that's what Tommy was at. Like that's his attitude. Well, exactly. Worth and I, trying. I feel like at the next Remembrance Day, if, you know, when they step up to the monolith to lay down a reef, if they just go... Rippers. Rippers. And that's the other thing, if you watch The Room, you will come away thinking, if you if there's anything you think, oh, I like that, I'm not very really good at it, so I won't do anything with it, don't do it anyway, because <laughs> this guy made a fucking film, and he is not it's good at it. It's been fairly successful. Do you know what the thing is? His acting was... Su- his directing is terrible, like it's such a bad... Film. Somehow his acting is worse. Yeah, no, I mean... The I can't convince you how bad it is. I was trying to tell someone. I saw I watched it and I straight away I had a that conversation with someone. That is the only someone. reason I would tell people to watch it is so that they can believe how bad and I was it is. And I was like trying to convey how bad the acting was, his yeah. acting. I was like, I can't do it. I can't put into words I could, how the, bad he the, is. The thing is, someone I read a review on it and it's a very long review and it's very hilarious. I'll send it to you after the pod. And if Please I do. can remember... I might screenshot it or link it if I can to our Twitter or something. Yeah, 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 at, at Source um, Crossing. But one of the things the guy said was, even if you set out with a bigger budget, with better actors and at like Steven Spielberg or whoever, like it doesn't matter, if you set out to make the worst film imaginable, you would not achieve no, you wouldn't. what was achieved in this film. And that's that's the genius it's of, one of those it. things it's you couldn't so bad. You couldn't do this deliberately. No, you genuinely no, you just couldn't. couldn't. With all the talent and money in the world, you wouldn't be no, able you to. you really couldn't. Um, and on that note... Because you'd accidentally get something right. You would. Um, you absolutely would. But I think that's as good a point as um, yeah, th- any th- to start th- closing up. Uh, so guys, as always, you can find us at Swords Crossing on uh, Twitter, uh, Crossing Swords on Facebook, Crossing Swords underscore podcast at, uh, on Instagram, and Crossing Swords 19 at gmail.com, and that will appear... On the yeah, of the Crossing screen. Swords and the name of the episode on on YouTube or but follow our links on, on Twitter and Facebook. As always. And I will say this, I hope you've all enjoyed, I keep saying I will say this, it's become my new phrase. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, cultural walkthrough of a uh, uh, a classic yeah, moment and, and to be honest modern you, pop culture. I would genuinely say, even if you listen to the pod before you plan to watch it... It won't ruin it. I don't think it will no, ruin it. it really won't ruin it. Honestly, I think I could have seen... Uh, like like I think I could have done this. I could have listened to this podcast, then watched the film. It would not have changed how I viewed that film at all. No, I think I agree with that. Um, and guys, as always, uh, try and like and subscribe and comment and just any of those good keep things. Keep following, keep listening. Um, yeah, and like I said, more than anything, like sharing's great, and please do keep doing that. But liking as well makes a big difference. So um, yeah, and if you again, if you have any criticisms or any improvements or any ideas, hit us up. Let us know. So, guys, as always, thank you. Bye. Bye.